Uh, I think that's right. It probably is until you get certainty over the path of interest rate rises. So as an inter as an internet analyst, I've really become an interest rate uh, analyst. Until we get that stability, I think it's extremely hard, especially for the high multiple price to sales stocks. So the stocks I like here, you have to go with the highest quality consumer tech names. And in my mind, that's Google and in the market's mind too, I think, Amazon and arguably Facebook. Or you have to have real recovery plays you know, the, the travel names and even the ride sharing names, although we had some disappointments today from Uber, but that was the case of the market just wanting more upside than the company provided. So even with the drubbing that Facebook has endured over the past week or so, Mark, it hasn't reached valuations where there is a floor under the stock, even with a rising interest rate environment. I mean, it, it hasn't reached those value levels yet. Oh, I think it absolutely has. Uh, this thing is now trading at 14 times, 15 times earnings. This is the lowest multiple that Facebook has ever traded at. This is below where it traded during that 2018 controversy. Melissa, you'll remember that well. This is in the wake of Cambridge uh, Analytica, Cambridge Gate. Uh, so this is uh, these are trough levels. And for an asset that I think it's got to prove it, but I think you recover to 20 percent plus revenue growth, recover to almost 30 percent earnings growth. I don't think if I'm right about that, I don't think the stock's going to be trading at 13, 14, 15 times earnings nine months nine months from now that's why it's a really interesting opportunity here but i get it it's for fundamental reasons not for interest rate reasons it's uh, it's dead money for the next three to six months yeah i mean uh mark remind us uh, where you are on uber here i mean they talk about something that's been dead money for a longer stretch of time than that and a little bit of an adverse reaction to the investor day today well, I think um, investors and analysts, including myself, had expected them to be a little bit more bullish in terms of their long-term margin guides. Essentially, they only provided mid-term guidance, and they can essentially confirm street numbers. So street numbers aren't going to change based on today, and there's a little bit of expectation hope that they would. I don't think there's any dramatic change. And I thought there were a lot of interesting data points here. And by the way, I think the valuation on Uber is going to become increasingly compelling they're essentially trading at around 14 times EBITDA on 2024 uh, for an asset that I think can grow EBITDA, not 10 percent or 20 percent, but 30, 40, 50 percent, you know, over the next several years because they're starting from a small base. I mean, they're going to quintuple their EBITDA from 2022 to 2024, like in or in three years, 21 to 24. So that's what's so interesting about uh, about Uber. You still need that recovery. And those interest rates are going to be a bit of a headwind here. But I really like Uber. It's one of my top picks for the year, along with Amazon and Facebook.